Bitfinex Securities is the tokenized securities trading platform of Bitfinex, and they believe security tokens represent the next generation of capital markets. Joining us now is Jesse Knutson. He's the Bitfinex Securities Head of Operations. Jesse, so we're seeing all this news uh, from the SEC cr clamping down on crypto exchanges and saying that they're unregistered securities. So I guess this is where you come in. Maybe you can explain to us what tokenized securities are and how they differ from security tokens and, and your thoughts on this uh, SEC crackdown on unregistered securities in the business. Yeah, sure. No, I think security tokens and tokenized securities are probably the same thing. <laughs> but I think your question is, um, what are security tokens and how do they differ from maybe other digital assets in the industry? I think the, the short answer is what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this technology from Bitcoin and the digital asset industry more broadly that's kind of been battle tested over the last you know decade or so and apply that to traditional capital markets. And I think what that yields is a product that has all the advantages of digital assets that we're, we're used to trading 24 seven, 365 trading, real time settlement, global liquidity, you know, the ability to pull assets off exchange to self custody them, to move them to other platforms. And all of that wrapped up within a regulatory framework that gives investors and issuers clearly defined rights and obligations. Are, are, are these securities that, uh, the underlying securities, are these U.S. securities or they're non-U.S. Security, securities? No, we don't, you know, we, we don't interact with the U.S. There's no U.S. users on our platform. Uh, we've got one asset on the platform. So we're kind of in an interesting stage with the STO market, I think. I think the consensus view well, is kind of increasingly that, uh, you know, the technology from the digital asset industry is the direction where capital markets are going to evolve. So we've seen those comments from, you know, Larry Fing from BlackRock. We've seen it from the, the Fed even. So I think more people are looking um, kind of for, for markets to evolve in this direction. Um, and well, we've got asset? one asset on the platform. Oh, sorry, the Blockstream mining note. So it's a tokenized hash rate contract uh, issued by Blockstream, which is a Bitcoin infrastructure company and one of the biggest private miners in North America. You mentioned right. that and, you're and, not and operating the, in the United States. So why is that? And sure. do you see an opening in the future uh, of operating in the United yeah, States? No, listen, I, I think, I think, you know, there's an opportunity for financial inclusion here by focusing on, on, on markets that really need this technology, right? So we often talk about in the technology industry and in the digital asset industry about the unbanked, banking the unbanked. Now, I think that also applies not only to, you know, retail banking and to investors, but also to issuers. So there are silos of companies and, and even countries all over the world. I mean, specifically in emerging and developing markets like Latin America, like Central Asia, where I'm at now, at now in Kazakhstan. Um, and, and also in, in Africa. So I think those are the opportunities for us that we're really keen to pursue. So the uh, that that one the Blockstream note that you have, what's the kind of what yeah. kind of trading volume are you seeing on it? Yeah, the trading volume is small. It's a, it's a great product, but the structure is accredited, so that's kind of limited. We hope to increase that over time. I think uh, Blockstream is looking at different ways to structure that. We're looking at being able to uh, apply that to um, you know uh, more investors going forward. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair point. And that's why I mean, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of at a stage in the STO market where the opportunity is large. I think everybody sees us moving towards this way. But there's there's not a number of real assets out in the market yet. So so this the the the, the note itself is it it's payable in it's Bitcoin or is, is it in uh, UST, yeah, so the, the USDT itself, or? Yeah, the note itself is issued in Luxembourg. It's got a, an ISIN. It's a registered security. Um, and the product is that you get access to 2,000 terahash of mega of of mining capacity, and the Bitcoin that that produces is over a 36 month period. So I think it's it's been mining. I think about half of its tenor already, um, and it's produced. I haven't checked it recently. I think it's six and a bit Bitcoin. And that per, that was cleared note. by the by the, and that was that was cleared by the um, by by Luxembourg to to allow yeah, you to trade correct. it on on an exchange. Correct. And then our okay. platform is registered in the Astana International Financial Center, the AIFC. It's kind of um, you know a similar setup to the DIFC in Dubai, which people are maybe more familiar with. The idea is that it's a common law structure here in Kazakhstan. The legal system is based on um, British common law. It's a carve out from the domestic um, uh, legal system. And the idea is to give foreign investors a framework that they're comfortable with to invest into this economy. And on the other side, to make it easier for domestic companies to access global capital markets. And, and they're, they're very front foot on technology adoption here and they're, 
have a really good and deep understanding of, of the digital asset industry and, and Bitcoin. Uh, so I have to ask, why exactly are you in Kazakhstan? What, what brought you there? Yeah, no, so I think the, the, there's three parts to the SEO, STO puzzle, I think. So the first part is technology, and I think we've ticked that box, right? We've got platforms for trading like Bitfinex and Bitfinex Securities that can hand, handle massive amounts of volume with 99.9% .9 uptime. Um, we've got issuance technologies like the Liquid Network from Blockstream, which lets us do um, you know, transfer restricted assets with a, with a whitelist. So we're able to meet our KYC AML regulatory obligations and also give users a really low friction uh, user experience. The second part of the, of, the, of the puzzle, I think, is investable assets. Um, this was the problem with ICOs. Everything was focused on high risk, high reward, very early speculative investments. And we're targeting more mature kind of um, investments with cash flow that you can model, things like that. And then the third and final piece of this puzzle that's been the slowest to develop is commercially viable regulatory frameworks. And we're starting to see more of those emerge. And I think the AIFC is one of the jurisdictions where that's, where that's developing. Are they, are they allowing you to trade Kazakh? I mean, I, have you gotten approval to trade Kazakh securities on, uh, on Bitfinex securities? I, I, yeah, they, we're, we're, uh, we're exploring that now. We're exploring that now. I think that's an interesting opportunity. You know, my background is in capital markets, previously working in ECM at Macquarie, an Australian investment bank. And I look at STOs as the same thing as ADRs or GDRs, right? So historically, big Asian companies, listed companies would go to capital markets in, in London or Luxembourg if they wanted access to global liquidity. We can do that through STOs and we can access much deeper pools of global liquidity. And I don't think it's unreasonable to think that a jurisdiction like the AIFC in 12 months, 24 months, in five years, could be a jurisdiction comparable to Luxembourg or London.